Hey everyone, it's Jen with Spirited Saturdays and this week we're wrapping up our series on identity and talking about how the self is so important and how it's just so important to get back to who we are and um, separate that from any destructiveness and really identify who we are and nurture that and allow that to grow. So um, I know a lot of us get so confused. Who are we without the eating disorder? Who were we before? Who will we be? And um, in order to help explain that about myself, I went and I found a bunch of journal entries that I'd written over the course of many years just documenting different periods of my recovery. And um, I started a little bit before um, my eating disorder. And I just want to highlight um, briefly certain things about, you know, certain themes that stood out underlying, even, you know, even with the the destructiveness, even as bad as it got. Um, just, you know, there are certain themes that never went away that I, um, that I still um, wanted so desperately to own and to, you know, be a part of, which is the conflict, of course, when you feel the eating disorder is taking over entirely and you're longing to get those things back and you feel like they're out of reach. So I'm going to start with my um, with an entry from, uh, these are just a few entries from 2003. Okay, here it goes. 10 a.m. This is pre-eating disorder. Sort of. Shaking leg incessantly on music building lobby couch. The dean sees me and probably thinks I'm paranoid. I don't care. Ah! Right. 10 one <clears throat> I realize that I have a bit of phlegm. Yuck. Not good for singing by any means. As I am about to get up in my final nerve-wracking moments to go to the water fountain, I turn around to an audition assistant who asks me if I'm ready. Yes. 10.01 and 30 seconds, drink water at the water fountain, downstairs. 10.05. With the big boss's back turned to me, finding with fiddling with his own stuff, I'm the first audition, he says, play me something. I play. Do I know the format? What is the song about? I couldn't hear a damn thing. Can I play a scale? What kind of scale? Can I play with both hands? Was that natural, melodic, or harmonic? Was that Greek? Can I play a seventh? Can I play what he played? Can I play a different version of that chord? Yes, good, close enough. Let me ask you a question. You're a junior. Why do you want to be here another three, four years? Pressed for impressive response. Don't worry, you're in. But why? Don't worry, you're in. Don't worry, you're in. So casually, so reassuringly, almost fatherly, almost indifferent, so doesn't follow the rules. Just don't tell anyone I told you now. He tells everyone now and tells everyone not to tell anyone. He doesn't know I'm not good at hiding things. I smile and run and cry and laugh and act really, really dazed in a mild, depersonalized hysteria until I erupt and that's the end of that. <clears throat> I didn't like the song, but that's okay, you're in. The boys who come into this conservatory, they think they're the lords of the earth, don't let them. Keep writing, work on your piano, your words, your voice, and stop listening to so much Kate Bush. Now get out of here. Can I hug you? Sure. That was me to him. 7.15, backtracking. Woke up, showered, catastrophized about what shirt went with my new bootsies. They hurt my feet, but they look great at a piano bench. Later. Realized I forgot my boots for the gig, but at least they served me well at the audition. Don't worry, you're in. Don't worry, I'm in. Smiley faces. Times seven. Another day. Pizza, purchase college, studio comp, Marty's laughter, Noob's Asian goodies, Lisa's here, anthropology pants, bangs, fruit loops for dinner, typing with one finger, spring. This is the life. Later. I'm spending two weeks alone in someone's apartment on 57th Street starting May 18th. Holy shit. I am so fucking excited. She has two cats, too. This is my dream, a sample of my dream, I tell ya. 2004. It's very, 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 very much easier not to feel. To avoid feeling slash fearing love slash abandonment slash perceived abandonment, needing too much, feeling too much. It's better to just get rid of the tool that would give rise to it all, the contact. Have not a body, have no contact, have no fears, avoid being seen, avoid being intimate, avoid being cared for, avoid being abandoned, and feeling a hundred times worse than before when you were just alone, just lacking, when it was just you and your pre-existing emptiness, not a sudden unforeseen one, but one that you expect that never disappoints. I have faith in my eating disorder. I have faith in our relationship. It is more intimate than I can allow myself to be with any human partner. 
It will not disappoint me. It will make my, it will make itself available on command and never leave. Not at my will, but that's okay. Control me. It's just protection, an unrelenting protection. I love you. I want to, uh, blah, 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 what was this? I can't deal with being hurt um, because of my own overblown misconceptions of others' actions. It's just sickening. No one would want to touch me or come near me anyway. I can let my eating disorder in because it degrades, cut me, cuts me down as it touches, and encourages me to be a better person. It reminds me of the importance of whatever, gives me a focus, a goal, has my best interests at heart. I cannot disappoint it like I can those I love and adore, who I know will end up and leave, who will up and leave as soon as they see an unappealing side of me. I'm not the kind of person anyone would want to be intimate with. I have to accept this and not see him at all and further commit to my eating disorder. Okay, I'm sick of this. I never publicized this entry, actually. Neither, I, the other ones are very private or like semi-private. This is just very, very few people can see this. Okay, I'm sick of this. You guys are my friends, and I'm going to just say once and for all that this thing I'm fighting is an eating disorder and that it is bulimia. What a fucking relief. Now I can just tell you how I'm doing instead of being so freaking cryptic. This might take a little getting used to, but that just means it's not normal. I wrote a whole bunch of stuff. It took me 40 minutes to write that paragraph. I wanted to make it as perfect as possible. I'm terrified of what people who read this are going to think of me. Way later. Saw an injured pigeon on the street today and took him to the vet. As we walked, ran to the vet, he was having a seizure in my hands, as I found out afterwards. Eyes dilated, wings flapping reflexively, body contorting. I was terrified that I was holding him wrong. It looked like his head had twisted and his feet were on the wrong side or something. I panicked and tried to hold his head in place and run without him bouncing around. His eyes were closed for a bit and then open again. They shut tightly like he was convulsing, like a reflex, and I thought he was about to die. I was terrified he would die in my hands. I should have given him some Reiki on the way over, but it was too, bes but was too beside myself. When we got there as I was waiting for the vet, little insects started crawling around and under his feathers. I learned that they were feather lice. They looked like mini worms. I noticed that his shallow breathing at that point, it was so crazy feeling his rapid heartbeat in my palm on the way over. I had to take notice of it alongside his breathing while we stood still waiting. His eyes started blinking one at a time, not in unison. I panicked. I said, I think he's really bad because they were still waiting for the vet to come out. It was nightmarish. It felt nightmarish. Um, oh, pigeons are very light, by the way. They might have been an it might have been an obvious fact, but I just didn't expect him to be so light. Anyway, the vet came out and said he looked like he'd been hit by a car. She said he's in a pretty dire state. Took him in her office and I waited. I pet a cat on the bench. She came out with the pigeon in a black plastic bag. She said he had broken his back, probably getting hit by a car, and was paralyzed and had been having a seizure. I asked if he had been unconscious, but she said no, and wasn't sure if he felt the pain or not because of the electrical stuff in the brain during a seizure. Everything he had done from the moment I saw him at one point facing one direction and the next point turned around had been reflex. But she get, had given him an anesthetic to ease the suffering while putting him out, and she said that his last moments were spent like he was dreaming or high. He was three months old. Later. It's so funny how it can turn on you in an instant. I don't even remember the day or series of days when it happened, but here I am in the midst of it. On the train ride home from my nutritionist, I kind of dozed off and got this image in my head of a big animal dying, one who was in my care. He was drowning in a small pool, a big tub, this huge animal. I drained the water. I tried coaxing him back to life, giving him CPR. Then I spoon-fed him some food, the consistency of yogurt, and he started to wake up. He opened his eyes. I kept feeding him. I was relieved. It's so easy to listen to the voice that says, you're not there yet. You don't have a right to stop. It's tug of war in my mind. I feel so sad for my inner child who was taking the brunt of this, brunt for this, and didn't ask for any of it and wants no part in it. She doesn't see the rewards that the adult me sees. She sees it for how it really is, messed up and fucking with her ability to be herself. I just need to explain. I've never had this problem. In some ways, this is a delusional dream come true. It's like fireworks. It's like reaching heights that I've thought were impossible my entire life. If you had the healthfully passionate continuum and the delusionally passionate continuum side by side, this would be parallel to winning a Grammy. Although unlike this, a Grammy is something I once, in the far reaches of my mind, actually dreamed could be possible. So this, you could say, is even better than winning a Grammy, because I never believed it was a real possibility for me. 
The Grammy dream, you can say, has sufficiently withered at this point. So goes the inverse relationship of actual versus delusional dreams. I wish something would happen to me before Saturday that would make me not have to go to the wedding, not have to face the world at all, face coworkers, face my boss, face my therapist or nutritionist or anyone in my family or any of my friends and just be alone. There will never be a right time to turn this around and I have to catch myself in those clear moments and own them, snatch them, not let them get away because the eating disorder voice is so much stronger, so very quick to cancel them out. I need to own them because those moments are me. 99% of the voices in my head are eating disorder, but 1% is 1% and it means I'm still in there. So wake up. Don't let the stupid disorder take you down. It will come up with a million reasons that seem totally real why you should eat this instead of that or whatever. It will tell you you're crazy for even considering that for a minuscule fraction of a second, but your fear resulting from your clarity can overpower your fear resulting from delusion. It can. You are totally capable of fearing your way to survival more than fearing your way to defeat. Eating disorder paves only a path toward defeat. It is hell-bent on your destruction. You honor your survival. You are life-affirming. Eating disorder is death-affirming. It never has your best interests at heart. It is ultimately a self-serving captor. It will sacrifice your very being. It will go that far. It will convince you that it's either you or it. And in the end, it will have brainwashed you into choosing it over you. All of this will seem totally justifiable to you as brainwashing goes. You need to make a decision every day to act on your own behalf. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I wonder how I will handle letting go of the eating disorder identity. It's been the focus of my existence, just so central to getting through the day. And actually, that's it. Um, I didn't realize it ended like that. But um, yeah, that's sort of a smidgen from things throughout the years that, you know, I contained certain very, very minuscule pieces of myself at times um, in crisis, but, you know, they, they just... I was basically, you know, I'm not even like, you know, personality wise, just unrecognizable, self wise, identity wise, unrecognizable to everyone, including myself, um, just as it got worse and worse. So, you know, um, and I, I had different diagnoses, um, you know, kind of throughout and, and each were equally destructive and each were equally haze is diluting my sense of who I was. So, um, you know, but certain themes that, you know, I, I can look at and, and really understand, like, you know, these are parts of me that I, I can go on and, and build upon now and, and use this struggle to kind of help, you know, fuel the, that, um, integrate that into my future growth. Um, well, basically, you know, animals, lucid dreaming, I didn't talk about that here, but one of the things that happened with the pigeon um, had happened to me in a dream um, very similar to that um, a, a few months beforehand. Um, and then I spoke about lucid dreaming as well. So yeah, dreaming, uh, lucid dreaming, things like that, always so fascinating to me since I was a little girl. Um, music, of course, uh, friendship and contact. And, you know, naturally I gravitate toward people. I love connecting and being around people I care about. Um, my inner child, my spirituality. Um, I really do believe that my inner child or my soul or my higher purpose knows what it wants for me. And that's not an eating disorder. My Reiki, I wanted to perform Reiki. I wanted to give Reiki to the bird. I, you know, um, just so many, the cats, I was so excited about having cat, like staying with cats for two weeks uh, for the first time, like in my early twenties. Um, and, um, and having my independence, you know, I was still in college. I was like 21. Um, and, um, yeah. And, um, and now <laughs> I happen to be living with two cats in my own apartment <laughs> and, you know, it's, I don't know, it's not a permanent situation, but, um, but it's just interesting. It's, it's, I love animals and, um, yeah. So just, I don't know, it just goes, you know, right now my music has come back. I really felt I lost it for a while there. I did. I was convinced. I said, if I ever record anything again, if I ever write anything again, I'm just going to have to ask somebody else to record it because I've lost my voice and the chances of me creating anything again are actually actually pretty slim. So, you know, I have that back and it's, it's such a gift 
to me, and I'm so grateful for that, um, to be to have been given that back, so or to have worked for that, you know, um, and to connect with people over the different parts of the struggle and to document them through songs that I've written, you know, throughout the whole way. So, you know, I really love practicing freedom and I love practicing independence and awareness and connection. And so that's what this is all about. And anybody can ha is capable of doing that. And no matter where you are in your struggle, you're capable of letting it go and forming yourself based on who you always knew that you were and who you know you can be. And even if there's uncertainty there, even if you don't know exactly where that's going to take you, I say trust, let it go, let go of of any prior expectations of yourself, let go of anything you feel you should be if you don't totally connect to it, you know, um, let go if there's a way you were doing something before that you feel just wasn't feeling right, you were forcing it, you know, let go of that and embrace new things and embrace openness, possibility, freedom, and be open um, because anything can happen and you're capable of doing anything. Um, you know, I really believe that and it's something that I had to embrace in order to let this go and in order to become myself again and to continue to develop who that is. You know, um, I, I understand that I'm on a journey and that it's, it's ongoing. So uh, thank you so much for watching and um, have a great week. And I hope you were able to take something from these videos that we all did these past four weeks on identity because um, it's, it's just so important. So have a great week. Bye.